All right, there we go. Hello, Patrick, and hello, everybody. Welcome to our Facebook Live today with Patrick from California on how to find your true identity. Welcome, Patrick. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. It's such a uh, joy and pleasure and and uh, excited to be here uh, and, and to be invited to uh, to this interview. So it's so great to be here. And, uh, and I, I look forward to this hour with you so much. Great. Me too. And friends, uh, if you can see us here, we always have a little bit of lag time. But once you can see us, give us a thumbs up or send a little heart. Uh, and also let us know where you're calling in from. We always love to hear that. And of course, you always want to know also that everything is working well. So if there are any hiccups with our tech here, uh, with the internet or anything, just let us know. Hello, Irene. Thank you. Um, yeah. So also, if you have any questions along the way while Patrick and I are together here, just post them in the comment section here. I'll actually make my window a little bigger. Hi, Kari. I'll make my window a little bigger so that uh, I will definitely see those comments and then we can reply to those. Uh, we also had a great question sent in, and we'll integrate that a bit later in the in the interview. So just keep it coming. Anything you'd like to hear Patrick elaborate more on or us speak more about together. Great. So Patrick, uh, the topic that we've chosen together came about when I first heard you share a little bit about your experience. And I definitely remember that I had this ongoing like quest. I couldn't even phrase it so succinctly, like finding my true identity. I think I was much more vague than that. Uh, in hindsight, I could definitely see that this is what I was looking for. Um, but I had many what you could call deep questions. Uh, so, and I know you have been on this on this quest for quite a long time. So. Maybe just everybody can hear, hi, Amina and Brian, uh, so that everybody can get a context for your share. When and how did you come across the Balanced View Training and where were you at in life generally and maybe also in relation to this specific question or area of your life? Certainly, you're going to just... Uh... It's, it's certainly a joy to really to, sh to share that, to share about my quest uh, in this interview with you today and to, uh, to connect with you and how the training ha has been in my life. I came to the training um, about five to five and a half years ago. Um, so is my age. I'm later in life. <laughs> and um, I came to training at a time in my life where I felt and in some ways resigned to this management of things in my life. I, um, as part of this title in our talk today, in terms of a search for true identity, I was, uh, I would say, um, obsessed with trying to find who I was um, in, li in life. Um, and um, just as a general background, I'm an identical twin. Just to set some type of context, I'm an identical twin uh, with a very large, uh, raised in a very large family um, here in California. Um, and so, from a just from a general psychological standpoint, there was this quest to really find who I was in life, um, in the, in the midst of, of of many issues, family. Um, twin um, being always mistaken for somebody else. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I uh, went on that journey, even from a very young age to really do that and to find things and to grab self-esteem and to be um, recognized as a person in terms of my path, my career and so forth. And so when I came to the training five and a half years ago, um, I've had a very successful career. Um, I deal with uh, database technology um, with maps um, and have been very successful for almost 30 years um, in that um, uh, profession uh, and um, have reached kind of a plateau in that uh, profession, but quite happy with that. Um, and with that, I also had found many, many ways and I had sought many, many avenues 
for uh, inner peace, some, many avenues for finding relief through um, some very painful uh, moments in my life. And in general, um, had kind of reached a resignation like, oh, well, I can kind of manage things successfully and so forth. And I can go into more detail uh, about that as we talk. But I think one of the general areas is that I had many uh, spiritual teachers along the way from an Eastern uh, standpoint. I had, a, I had a, a meditation practice when I became, when I came to the training also uh, five years ago um, that I uh, was, had been involved in for about seven to eight years uh, before I came to the training. But still there was something missing um, in that. There was still something missing. I had been and terminated up to about six years ago um, my therapy practice that I had been in for, for 25 years. And I, I certainly probably will elaborate on that too throughout this interview. Um, and that was really uh, in an interesting way, a creative way for managing my life. Um, I would often uh, deal with things coming up through my day, through my week, through my career, in my relationships. I would package them all up <laughs> on a on a, maybe from a, a Sunday to a Thursday. I'd package them all up, uh, kind of just get by, take deep breaths through the week, manage my week. And then I would uh, launch into my therapy session on Thursday nights, unpacking that. And that was my way of kind of living for, for, for many, many years of ther using therapy as a way to manage um, myself. And in essence, kind of ask that question, who am I? Uh, mm. Who am I? Uh, through um, and that, and it was um, uh, it was powerful <laughs> and um, impactful in my life to have that therapy, to have that relationship. Um, but still, something seemed to be missing uh, in terms of finding that question. I can only bounce around my issues, uh, sit on the couch, and elaborate on my issues for only so long, and and sometimes and often get spun out. And, sp and spin in analyzing, you know, what's going on, my relationships and so forth. So that was some um, part of that process. Um, very, it was a wonderful relationship, but it still had this thing that was missing. I still seemed to be spinning on uh, many issues, uh, sitting on the therapy couch. So that's really when I, when I came to the training five and a half years ago, that's what I was introduced. Uh, with the training through my uh, partner at the time and now my wife. Uh, and um, she was just cruising along and looking at it and was very, very excited about it, even though I had my own practice at the time. So that was really when I, I came to the training um, mm. through introduction through my, my partner and now wife. Uh, so it's, uh, and, and, and saw it unfold through that. Uh, but I still had my own meditation practice um, at that time. Mm -hmm. so. Well, thank you. That was, <laughs> that was a beautiful snapshot <laughs> of uh, 25 years or however many years of your, of your search and quest before beautiful. Thank you for sharing uh, so openly. I just heard from somebody there that your mic is tapping a bit against oh. something. So maybe just to be aware of that, but I, I could hear you fairly well. Could definitely hear your your very colorful um, background. So to summarize, you were, you were able to manage, you were able to like hold everything together, keep going, do the stuff that you just had to do to be like a successful, like in the middle of life, like guy in California. Um, but you were still like looking for something like even though you were talking about those package, <laughs> those I love how you expressed it about those packages um, of every week, even though you were talking about that all the time, there was something there that you felt you couldn't reach, obviously, and, and that was what you were looking for. Um, how how did how did you then like resonate with balanced view what was it about balanced view that then made that like shift or what what did you recognize there that at least made you curious enough to 
you know, when you saw that in your in your today wife, uh, that you thought, oh, there is something interesting there, and I want to explore that more. Well, I did. I, I, I saw. I certainly saw uh, my wife's passion and interest uh, through um, her her involvement in the training. She then um, we invited me after about a year, year and a half of her being in the training. Um, she invited me to uh, a what's called an open meeting. And it was in San Francisco, um, <clears throat> and um, uh, where a number of other uh, San Francisco participants would gather on a Thursday, uh, Thursday night. And with that, <clears throat> and, and going to that, I remember one of the first or second meetings. There was a, two things I wanted to talk about. There was, one was. Um, there's a tremendous warmth with the community and, and heartfelt warmth and, and welcoming that I really felt there. And that really was um, attractive. Um, and, and then two, um, I uh, was just really, um, when I, there was two, when I went to the meeting, one of the first things that was said at the end of the first meeting was, you know, try this out too. That was when they test this out. Um, but when I sat there in the first or second meeting, um, there was a description of, of managing what we call managing data, managing issues, managing uh, events, relationships, uh, sensations, um, managing all those things in life called data. And there were three things that were mentioned about that that totally captured what I'd been doing with my life. And that was, oh, well, there, when something comes up in my being, when some type of issue or question or pain part, there was, I could avoid it. And I had created many ways, many interesting ways in life to avoid uh, painful or uncomfortable things in my life. I created that. Or I, I could replace it <clears throat> with something else, uh, maybe, a, maybe some type of mantra um, I could replace it maybe, maybe possibly with meditation, some, some issue that would come up. Um, um, or, um, or I could indulge in that particular, there were like three things. And so when that was described in the open meeting, I said, that's what I've been doing with my life. <laughs> I've been doing all those three things um, with uh, with whatever would come up in my life. And it was just like a juggling act, or I was like grabbing all the positive ones and holding on to all the positive experiences that would help make me feel better when there was a, some type of painful or emotional or some type of distress in my life. And it totally captured who I was in terms of that description of, of managing data. And that, mm. really, uh, uh, that really drew me in and said, oh, that that was kind of like the uh, the holy grail of of what was of what I've been doing with my life. It's just like oh, that's me, and so there's where um, I was immediately drawn to into that. And to come back to what I said earlier is I'd always wanted, and then and then there was this third, there was this fourth choice mentioned in the meeting uh, was to let things be as they are and rest. And um, <clears throat> I go, okay. I'm sitting there going, I've always wanted my therapist to tell me that on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> I'd always want to sit there and wait, hey, Patrick, rest, you know, <laughs> let it be as it is. Um, and uh, that's, uh, in essence, was, was my first introduction uh, to the training. And um, here I am now, <laughs> five and a half mm -hmm. years later, uh, just just so grateful that how that was explained uh, to me and um, and to, uh, to to really now have that fourth option in terms of finding my identity was to really just rest in my being, uh, rest in and expanding it. And I use the term a lot in my uh, early days in the training. I use the term of pulling the lens back and having a big view from a mountaintop, but I also call it pulling the lens back on whatever's in front of me rather than focusing intensely mm. right on the issue or at, because it just starts to spin the emotional 
if issue or something just starts to spin. But if I can pull the lens back like a wide angle and see that picture on things, it's quite freeing and tremendous freedom um, and so forth is was um, I can experience. So. Mm -hmm. so in other words, you from from looking and searching for your identity as like a the perfect And I've lost the connection. Uh, hi, Patrick. I, th I think it was me. I somehow, my camera just stopped for a second there. Um, so I instead of the management, you could just rest and, and rest in your own being, as you said. And um, you weren't, you didn't feel that same need to be involved in all the thoughts, emotions, and sensations, neither holding on nor trying to manage them. Can can you still hear me? Does it does it all work? Okay, perfect. Um, and so one way for everybody here who isn't familiar with the Balanced View training, um, that experience that Patrick so beautifully described of like not getting involved and being like on a mountaintop, that which sees all of that, that which is looking, what's looking, what's listening, what's what's attentive to what you're watching here today, Patrick and me talking, we call this fundamental essence of your being open intelligence. It's the intelligence that's aware of all the thoughts, emotions, and sensations. It's the intelligence that's at the basis of who we always were. Even in the seeking process, that's the same intelligence that's looking everywhere basically for itself, right? I mean, this is this is really the that shift that happens instead of looking for our identity in all those things, we really reflect back and see, well, who who am I? Who who is this that's looking? what's listening and your your description of that is i remember that so well as well when i when i first had the introduction to open intelligence that i thought oh my god all i did in meditation was try to have different feelings i i i tried to have a different thought a different feeling or no thought and no feeling just trying to have some empty state but even that is just another state, just like all the thoughts and emotions. So it's basically just a better experience, but it isn't really what I was looking for. I was looking for the underlying awareness, the underlying intelligence that's always already present. That certainly connects so much to my experience, Jochen, in terms of um, the uh, finding the underlying basis of who I, who I am. And, and when that was explained to me, and then I could take this moment, I could, I could share this moment of my stopping thinking and then see what's left, there was my essence. There was my essence. And that so simple, but it, it changed my life. It, it mm. was so simple, it changed my life. It stopped uh, the searching. Um, I, I mainly felt within that those first few introduction meetings and so forth that my, my search had ended there with the simple act of taking a short moment, a short moment of stop thinking and to, or to pull the lens back. And it meant also that pulling the lens back or taking the short moment meant that I could feel now everything <laughs> and experience everything in its openness. Whereas before, I would use some type of antidote, some type of maybe alcohol or something to uh, cover up that moment. But now with the lens pulled back, I really could feel everything profoundly and deep and deep and deeply. And, mm -hmm. and that's 
who I am, that's experience who I am as a human, as a human, is to feel everything just profoundly. And so those those mechanisms um, begin to no longer work in terms mm -hmm. of indulging, replacing, or avoiding those mechanisms. So it's very uh, it's very exciting. Very exciting. Mm. Wow, and I love what you said, which is a key distinction to also one of the practices that I've had um, that felt kind of detached and like watching things like from a distance. You just said you could feel everything deeply and and, and I don't know if you said intensely, but I had that feeling from what you were sharing. It isn't that you were just like removed on that mountaintop and everything else was far gone. It was like you were able to feel everything fully deeply and completely because you didn't take that to be it sounds to me this is a bit of an interpretation just tell me if that's if i'm off track there but it sounds because you didn't feel threatened by it you didn't feel any hope mm. or fear around your thoughts emotions and experiences any longer so you could just rest in that ease of your own being when you had that vantage which is accessible like you said in every moment that we remember and with the right instructions as you mentioned it had, was just after a few meetings that you really became increasingly um like adept at accessing that within yourself the and once again the, sh the short moment the simplicity of the short moment was just it's magic it's, it's just very much like magic and to to once again that being <laughs> that choice <laughs> that option was just opened up to me um so early in those in in that training itself so um it's uh and it and and then and then to be trained that it could be reset i could mm -hmm. reset that through the day through my days um i could reset that um, as I show up to work and deal with sometimes challenging moments or, or uh, challenging work relationships, I could reset that um, in those moments at work. And so I began to see, and I could reset that even in my partnership, in my relationship um, uh, too. So I began to see how it could really um, assist <laughs> and profoundly assist my um my my day um, in my you know my life uh, and so it was um, extra exciting to have that mm -hmm. uh, available and then to have it as um, kind of reset uh, in those short moments you know a, a lot of my you know uh, therapeutic time on the couch was dealing with uh, uh, familiar family parental issues, uh, twin issues, uh, mm -hmm. and so forth, that just kept me locked into this mindset of, of, of sometimes not having a relationship with my parents or my twin brother. Um, and then to have that whole totally released into being able to have that uh, reset into a, a short moment to have just to seeing them exactly as they are also rather than some type of projection that I had in my life. So the reset, the short moment also helped me really reestablish relationships uh, that I hadn't had and to be at ease with them. I mean, that, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say there was anything drastic changed, but to be at ease in those relationships, there was a greater ease, uh, relaxation, a resting in enjoying their company uh, mm -hmm. like I hadn't before. Um, mm. That's so beautiful. I remember the first night, uh, what I would call an adult mature conversation with my mom. Um, that was, uh, yeah, I, I was shocked by how, you know, how my expectations about life and especially the people closest to me had really locked me into a certain way of relating and, and perceiving. Um, now my picture here is getting a bit fuzzy. Can you still hear me and see me? I can hear you well, but your video has gone. Blurry. Okay. Uh, don't know. It's uh, the internet up here is a bit sketchy, so I hope it will restore itself. Uh, let's see. Let's see how it goes. 
Um, so how quickly did you like slip into these into these results? I know um, obviously in the last five and a half years you've been around for quite a bit and you've did you then also participate quite soon after that introduction in the 12 empowerments or, or how did your journey with balanced view look in correlation to those results that you were just sharing? Like how quickly did that unfold that you have noticed these changes, not just within yourself, but how they transpired into your relationships? Well, I, I did take it um, a bit cautiously. I was um, in the front, I, I waited about, um, a year. I was in the Thursday night meetings for approximately a year um, with the community there, which I, I thoroughly looked forward to my, my Thursday evenings um, heading up to San Francisco from my work down the peninsula on my, on my motorcycle and um, met the group and uh, experienced both two calls. We both had an open meeting and a clarity call. Uh, going on in those times, so it was about a about a year. I think it was also just my own waiting of just um, of checking out. I still had my um, <clears throat> Eastern meditation practice that I was still in the back of my mind questioning <clears throat> where is the value, um, where was the value in, in my my participation there. So it was about a year <clears throat> and uh, so forth, and then. Um, I had heard much about these steps, taking the introduction um, course, and then the empowerments. And um, towards the end of that fir that first year, I says, "I'm I'm going to dive deeper. I'm going to dive deeper um, into this into this practice," and and made that choice uh, to take the introduction. I don't recall anything really dramatic about that decision other than it just felt like it was the natural thing to do mm -hmm. there. And, and I was connecting just uh, wonderfully to the community um, also. So that was also part of my thing of this. Oh, this is, this community really embodied the practice and training tremendously. That really was is so attractive. It really embodied. I said, "Wow!" Um, I said, "Wow!" <laughs> These this is to be, and so that's when I went into the. I took the introduction and then went right into the empowerment training. After that, mm -hmm. so. and and then these results that you've mentioned opened throughout this entire process. So you you just mentioned you already saw the community embodied, like they were what is it called, walking the talk um, and uh, really living what was shared. It wasn't just like a philosophy or um, something that worked for them only as a, as a practice, but it really, you felt the lived experience there. And then you began being this lived experience yourself. Yeah. So um, well, how, okay. go, go ahead. <laughs> Um, I, and I, I think I'm still drawn. I'm, uh, I was so drawn to this thing of, of, um, effort, effortless being, I was drawn to the simplicity and the, and, uh, and, and that, and cause in each short, once again, this, and simplicity, each time I took a short moment, I reconnected to my true identity and back to this theme. I reconnected to my, my true identity. Um, on a side note, I've always felt I've had some very magical and very moments in my life filled with grace. I'm, I'm just amazing uh, cosmic moments that I've actually had in my in, in my life. Um, and of course, there's always wanting to come back to those and hey, I want more of those. Yeah. Um, and this practice, in terms of wrestling, really identify with this experience of being um, when I'm most relaxed. When I'm most at rest, boy, there's so much available. There's so much more empowering, empowerment um, in my life to understand what's who I am, what I want to do with my life, um, what's the next step in the day, just in that resting moment. So I, I just wanted to come back to that, uh, that, 
that part of the training that it was really, really, really attractive and, um, and wanted to know more uh, mm -hmm. in terms of the introduction um, and so forth. So that's, and then I went into the empowerment. See, that's a whole other subject <laughs> is the empowerment uh, training. But that's what drew me there was this, um, I, you know, I no longer had to um, spend so much time on a cushion that meditation, the awareness could be brought in to every moment of my life rather than sequestering it off to a half a, a morning session or an evening meditation or something that it was right there accessible um, each moment of the day. Oh, that is so good. <laughs> Beautiful to, to, to hear that and how, yeah, just how you clicked with that. It's, mm -hmm. it's really obvious how for you, like even though you were, <clears throat> you were searching all this time before, it sounds like the, the training and, and that being immersed with, with others who lift that already made it so easy for you to just click in. Like mm -hmm. you had glimpses before, and, but that integration piece to make that consistent and to really get it, how this, how this could be brought into every aspect of your life. That's so beautiful. Um, how, how did that open for you? You, you, you mentioned already, um, relationship with family where you noticed like changes. It was easier to be with them. Not that it was like really hard before, but now there was just more ease. Were there other things you've noticed in those earlier days already? Wow. This is like, it, it actually works where <laughs> you thought, wow, this is, uh, different than, than what I tried before. Well, I, I, I I had been, um, uh, I would call it king of, of, of antidotes uh, <laughs> in my life. <laughs> um, explain, and explain it. I had um, really been always trying to find a way to feel better and, and just uh, um, there are a myriad of, of things and actions uh, drink and so forth. I would, I was always kind of seeking some anecdotal pleasure to, uh, for relief. Mm -hmm. And so here, um, <laughs> once again, here's that, that other option was to not have an antidote. But so I saw that decrease. So when you say, what did my relationships, but also just my, my actions moved out of this kind of seeking, um, ways to give me relief, they stopped. And so mm -hmm. my own, just in terms of how I spent my time, just shifted um, away from um, all those activities to try for pleasures. Like, like again, you know, the winning is, is I would package up all my little uh, emotional things and go to the th therapy couch. Um, I often would pack up all that too and try to escape to a weekend, you know. Mm -hmm. I try to go relax and to a spa or something on a, on a weekend um, too, which um, there are many in California to head <laughs> off to on a weekend. <laughs> and so uh, that whole kind of, that changed. That was a shift in terms of my, uh, my time. But I, I, I come back to that, how much um, also um, it, it uh, the short moment just cleared out um, cleared, just cleared out the confusion too. I guess that's another thing I wanted to kind of talk about is, you know, with this kind of mistaken identity or trying to also seek identity, there's this always this kind of grayness of, there's this cloud of confusion that was often in my life uh, too. Once again, coming back to one of being king of antidotes, I wanted to be king of trying to getting rid of the, the uh, confusion in my life. That I, mm -hmm. that I experienced. So, um, so that was really probably one of the more, I haven't talked about it, but probably the more painful parts. Um, without an identity, I'm cruising around in the clouds and trying to figure things out and having this kind of um, heavy weight of confusion in my being. That's the way I was feeling often in my mm -hmm. being to feel that sense of confusion. And so, um, that uh, changed, that, 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 that shifted um, immensely. 
with, mm -hmm. with training. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. What a relief. Yes. A beautiful relief. Uh, Patrick, we also received a question here from Laurie that I thought I'd read. I have a question regarding finding one's true identity. As I'm opening up into, intellig into open intelligence as my identity, because of the 12 empowerments and my training with Balanced View, I'm much more calm and stable with everything and in life. My question is, how do I find my true gifts, strengths, and talents? I've made my living as a massage therapist and was a full-time single mom working for the last 20 years. I feel there is something else to offer. Do you have any advice? So first, over to you. What What is your response to, to this question? What was your experience around strengths, gifts, and talents? Well, that's... that's uh... <laughs> that's uh, that's been kind of it has been a question in my life um, even before I came to training and 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 now um, I did in the question I heard um, the, the person's in the tra 12 empowerments uh, training um, so I could say something about that in terms of the, the 12 empowerment training itself it was um, changed my life in essence, took me from victimhood and that cloud that I was speaking about into a much more freeing life and a much more freedom life. And all of this is kind of hard to describe, but the freedom that I was feeling was coming now from inside mm. rather than having some type of external sense of freedom. This freedom was coming from something internally that I felt um, it's, it's so hard to describe some of this, <laughs> but I'll try. Mm -hmm. There was a greater You're doing great. <laughs> there was a greater spaciousness inside me through the training, a greater spaciousness just to sit with um, whatever was in front of me, and and with that, I could only suggest in my own in my own experience is that there's an innate knowing that will come up in terms of knowing what to do with my time. There's an innate knowing what to do um, with, my, with my already skills and talents. Um, that, that, that'll just come up just because there's a greater space inside me to, to know from a place that I didn't know before because I didn't know any better than trying to <laughs> manage all my issues you know, or, or manage my blame on this or, or whatever. Now with that as a reset in terms of a short moment, there was a greater spacious to know. And then with suggestions is, is to write down and to note what I love to do most. What is it that I love to do most in that, when that, with that, with that greater spaciousness. So um, it's, mm. uh, it's, it's unfold. I mean, I've had a very successful career with, uh, in terms of technology, um, and yet that still is, I still feel like there's this greater space of being available for something else too. And then I just rest, I rest, I take a short moment to see what will that in, unfold um, in my life. And I guess the issue here is, is I'm no longer efforting in that way. I'm no longer efforting in that direction and resting. Efforting versus resting comes back to me, I think, in, in terms of that uh that place that um in, in me um and terms i don't know what's next i just simply don't know and and in terms of what i want to do next i'm close to retirement in my own experience i'm getting close to retirement in my work and um i'm uh, relaxing and what will unfold what what may what, what may unfold in my life and so that's i i come around to this point i i i kid around sometimes in uh in describing this practice is that i've never been um commanded to rest rest <laughs> 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 i've never been you know thou shalt this or that or sit on the cushion for 30 minutes but no i've never been you know commanded yeah. oh hey rest <laughs> Relax <laughs> in, in that quite quite unique in this in this practice to do that. So that's uh, 
kind of how I find the, that in Squish. So <laughs> the most compassionate command. <laughs> yes, that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> and you know i love i mean you mentioned retirement like it doesn't feel at all like you'd be retiring even though that of course describes the change in the nature of relationship with your current profession mm -hmm. but it really feels like there's so much opening for you and i love in relation to this question um from from laurie um Candice really summarized it beautifully the other day in a in a in a training. Candice is the founder of Balanced View, in case anybody here is just starting um, exploring the teaching. And and we were all in a training, incredible training with Candice. And somebody asked a question um, a bit similar to to yours. And Candice, you know, gave a beautiful response. But the thing that really struck me deeply was she said, it isn't so much about what you're doing, but about who you're being. And I felt this is amazing because, you know, you can do so many things. But the the most important point is, which Patrick just so beautifully you shared as well, is where that comes from. Like, who do you be? And then what, once you really are increasingly grounded in that, I could feel that in myself. I'm doing many things today, like being <laughs> being on live stream here that would have freaked me out from my old perception of who I had always taken myself to be, where I would have to control not only my own perception of myself, but everybody else's perception of myself. And so to be free within myself, to have that freedom, as you put it, come from within myself, allowed me to explore what is it that I really want to do? Like if I don't, so to speak, care about what I think of myself, what other people think of myself, when I don't explore all the different hopes and fears and project into the future or, or look back into the past, if I just am, what is it that I feel most drawn to do? And again, your simple suggestion here that you also heard in the teaching, just really look at that. What, what do you love doing in your life? And, you know, often that correlates with also where we're skillful because what we love to do, usually we do that quite a bit because we love doing it. So naturally we train up skills and vice versa. We love doing the things we're good at. So just becoming more attuned to that rather than feeling trapped in career paths or feeling trapped by hopes and fears like around money or other circumstances in our life. And um, then of course, also as you go through the 12 empowerments and you're in touch with a personal trainer, bring that question up with them as well. I did that with my teacher and I have ended up in places that I wouldn't even have dared considering, let alone going for. And it's amazing to have somebody in our life who can really see ourselves already as these empowered, capable beings that we really are. And, and we just begin to settle into that. So um, beautiful question and um, one that would deserve an entire interview just on deepening strengths, gifts, and talents. But I hope that could, um, that could respond a little bit here as a first step. And let's see, I didn't see another question on that end. Good, great. Patrick, this was amazing. I think this was one of our longest interviews and I could go on for at least another hour. Uh -huh. Beautiful to be together. And um, friends, everybody here who's new to what we're doing or if you've been like lurking around uh, the fence somewhere, um, if this sounds interesting, if you could see something, hear something in Patrick, in Patrick's story that you resonate with and where you're wondering how can you discover your true identity? How can you tap into that wealth of ease and compassion that Patrick, you shared with us so beautifully today? We're offering a free breakthrough session, which will be a one-on-one -on -one call with us where we really take a look at your life and see what's working for you right now. What are the practices you've been using to reach your goals? And we just basically listen a lot to where you're at in life and, and what you're passionate about and what you want to accomplish. 
And then we'll also consider how your next steps could look together. So whether that's with balanced view or somewhere else, or what about balanced view could be a good next step. We'll just look at it together very openly and see <clears throat> what could you bring you closer to your, to your goals, okay? So we'll post the link to apply for a breakthrough session right here. I see it's already popped up. Thank you, wonderful team. Uh, bright.lc forward slash call. We'd love to hear from you, get together with you. And um, Patrick, that leaves me just with a big hug, a virtual <laughs> hug and great gratitude. That was just completely beautiful hearing from you today. Thank you so much for sharing so openly and, and really beautifully. Oh, thank you, Jochen. It's just been a, a joy and pleasure and uh, in, in sharing that with, uh, with you and in this platform to all of you out there. It's just been a joy this morning here. To, to be with you all of you. Thank you so much. Mm, beautiful. Mm. Thank you all friends. And thank you as always to Candace for building this incredible mm. platform on which yeah. we could all come together. Definitely. Have a great rest of your day wherever you might be and uh, talk to you all soon. Bye for now. Bye Patrick. Bye Jochen. Bye everyone. Mm -hmm.